God. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we just bless you this morning, Lord. We thank you for your presence, for your being an ever-present help in the time of trouble, Lord. We know that you are always with us, that you always have a good end determined for us, Lord. And we're grateful for that this morning. We ask you to bless your people. Amen. Bless them coming in and bless them going out, Lord, and everything they set their hand to. And you will get all the praise, the glory, and the worship for you alone deserve it. In Jesus' name. And everybody said praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Give him a hand clap. Praise God. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Tim, for opening this morning. Great job as always. Thank you, worship team. And thank all of you for being here with us this morning. Appreciate it very much. I hope everybody will take a moment and be sure and shake the hands of our guests and let them know how much we appreciate them being here and how much God loves them. Amen. In case I don't get back there, those are my wishes for all of you. God bless you. Appreciate you being here this morning. Praise God. Amen. So while uh, Peter's warming up on the information back there, this is what you have to deal with at first, at least, is my stories. <laughs> and uh, if you can endure this, God is with you. Praise the Lord. But I've discovered that I'm addicted to donuts. It's a vicious circle. <laughs> Okay, praise God. I got a part-time job. You know, things are not really financially going over the top here for me. So I got this part-time job at a fire hydrant store, but there's no place to park. Come on. I can keep doing this, you know. Praise the Lord. Well, I won't give you too much more. However, I did discover how you make holy water. Boil the hell out of it. <laughs> that was good. Uh, Karen's right now thinking, what, did, what am I doing? Why did I bring my family here? <laughs> okay, one more just to let you know that we're all human here. Okay? I just read this story about beavers. It's the best damn book I ever read. <laughs> Beavers, damn. Dams. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. See, you know, religious people can get really freaked out about every little thing and saying. And Look, God is not interested in all that. He's dealt with all of that. He loves us for who we are. With all of our faults, with all of our weaknesses, with all of our humanity. Amen. Sometimes we just need to be reminded that uh, everything is not sin. Yes. Praise the Lord. God gave us all things to enjoy. Yes. Amen. And we spend all of our lives freaking out and worrying about what is and what isn't. We don't enjoy much of life. Amen. We don't give God much glory. And we're all bored to tears. Praise <laughs> the Lord. Amen. So, praise the Lord. Thanks again for being here this morning. And I want to start off, uh, Peter, with Colossians 1. And I'm going to read verses 12 through 23. And as he's pulling these up, the scriptures up, I want to just kind of recap a little bit here in the beginning because a couple of weeks ago or three weeks ago now since we didn't have service last week, we talked about sin having been dealt with. So now today, and this is, it's difficult for us sometimes to understand this because most of us grew up in in churches where sin was the dominant theme. Mm -hmm. And so we were constantly being reminded of how messed up we were, as if we didn't already know it. But the point is, God has dealt with sin. Yeah. This thing, you, you're not going to sin against God because God has, if you're a believer, yes. God has already declared you to be righteous. Yes. The way we sin is against each other. It's, yes. it's this thing, it's horizontal. It's how we hurt each other. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so, it's good with God. The problem is we make this hell by being human, you know, by just not really trusting God. And part of it is the fact that if we don't feel like everything is good between us and God, then we kind of project that out onto other people. If we're uptight and concerned and worried and freaking out about everything that's going on in our life or we make a mistake and then we beat ourselves up for weeks afterwards, we have a tendency to, to kind of be ugly to other people at the same time. Well, God, that's what God is trying to resolve. So 
You know, I, I heard, uh, in fact, I just heard Creflo Dollar saying this this morning, and I thought it was really good. I mean, we know these things, but we don't know them. You know what I mean? We have them intellectually, but we just don't really grasp it. But everybody on this planet's name is written in the Book of Life. They get blotted out if at the end, by the end of this life you haven't accepted Christ. Because He is your Redeemer. We were just talking about this morning how a believer's life can impact other people around them. Or the fact that there's a church here can, can make it better for the people that are in the community, even if they're not a part of the church. Just the fact that there are believers here. So what God has done is make it right. So everybody on this planet is living under grace. Yes. Yes. Doesn't matter if they're born again or not. The, the problem will come at the end of this life if they haven't accepted Christ, exactly. then there will be a judgment. Exactly. If you've accepted Christ, you've already been judged. Yes. Now, I don't care what you've done since you got judged. Because I'm telling you, everybody in here has issues. Yes. Everybody yes. has stuff that goes on in their life that isn't according to the Scripture. Sure. But God has said, my blood covered it. Yes. And my grace is sufficient. Yes. Now, if we really understand that, then it's a lot easier for us to love one another. Because we're not carrying around a bunch of baggage and we're not feeling guilty about everything all the time. The original sin was Adam and Eve did not believe God. And what was the result? Now, all of a sudden, they don't just know innocence. Now they know good and evil. Now they have a conscience and it's guilty. And that's what Jesus came to deliver us from. So there would be no consciousness of sin. Yes. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen. You say, well, are you telling me that we can do anything? Yes. I'm not telling you you should. That's right. I'm telling everything's been covered. Yes. Past, present, and future. Yes. The problem is you'll reap some rewards and some stuff yes. for what you do. Exactly. I mean, I've said it plenty of times. Look, I've been there. I'm like Paul. I was the chiefest of sinners. Amen? In fact, Paul said, I am the chiefest of sinners. Praise the Lord. I mean, I've done it. Right. If I go out and rob a liquor store tomorrow, my relationship with God is the same as it was the day before. But my relationship with the law will be altogether different. Exactly. There will be consequences. If I, you know, cheat on my wife, God and I are still good. But we're not. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. There could then become murder. And who knows what else. But I'm just saying. You understand what I'm saying? This is, I know it sounds radical, but this is the truth. If this isn't the truth, then what, did, what was it that Jesus actually did? Exactly. He either finished it as he said he did, or he didn't. Okay, that was a couple of weeks ago. Sin has been dealt with, okay? Then the week before last, we talked about you being... God's body in the earth. We are the body of Christ. Well, unless that first issue is not settled, you'll never get into the second. I mean, you'll never really understand what your potential is or who you really are in the eyes of God if you don't settle the sin issue first. Right? So this is why I think the church has never really progressed to the point where we really are dominating the earth. Amen? Because we're still dealing with our failures. We're still constantly... You know, critiquing ourselves, laying in bed at night thinking, oh, what a stupid thing that was to say. And, and why did I do that? And why did I, you know, why didn't I? So thinking because of that, now God can't bless me because I've been bad. You know, so that's the point is that if we don't settle the sin issue, and that's what Jesus came for. He settled it so that we could then move on into the kingdom of God and operate as God, little G, in the earth. Yes. Sons of God. Okay, so that's what I want to talk to you about this morning is how we, what we do in that reality. What we're really supposed to be, okay? So in Colossians chapter 1, we're going to read verses 12 through 23 here. Giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Now I want you to really think about these words because they're not just words. This is God talking to us. Okay? Who has delivered us from the power of darkness... And has translated us into the kingdom of His dear Son. He has. It's not something we're waiting for to take place, okay? In whom we have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sins. 
past, present, future. Redemption. We've been redeemed. We've been restored back to the original condition, which is innocent. There's no law anymore. To, okay? Who is the image? See, we've been, forgiveness of sins. We've got redemption through His blood. And He's the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature or all the rest of humanity. For by Him were all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, or all things were created by Him and for Him. And He is before all things, and by Him all things consist. He's the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that is, that in all things He might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in Him should all fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of His cross, by Him to reconcile all things unto Himself, by Him, I say whether they be things in earth, things in heaven, and you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath He reconciled. Wow. In the body of His flesh through death, to present you holy, unblameable, and unreprovable in His sight. That's how God sees you if you're a believer. Amen. Yes. If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am a minister. Now when he says, if you continue in the faith, he's not talking about if you, be, if you now continue, because you never were perfect. Right. So you're not going to continue to be perfect if you never were. Exactly. He's talking about staying in faith, in faith of the grace of God. Yeah. That's the gospel that he preached. That's what Paul preached was the gospel of grace. Meaning everything's good with you and God. If you keep the faith in that, amen, you, you're going to move on into a realm, amen, of, of reality with God that most people in the church have never experienced. Praise the Lord. And it's not because God doesn't want us to. It's because we're preaching mixed messages all the time. You're good, and then you're not good. You're, you're deserving, then you're not deserving, you know. And he's telling us, you got it. You're good with God. He wants to bless you, coming in and going out, head, not the tail, above, not beneath. All those things God wants for you as a believer, okay? All right, Revelation chapter 12, verses 10 and 11, Peter. I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of His Christ. For the accuser of the brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame Him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They loved not their lives unto the death. Unto the death of Christ. Not your death, His death. Okay? Alright, so we'll move on here. I'm, I said I'm recapping here a little bit, but I said last week or two weeks ago now that we are spiritual Israel. Yes. All right? That's what the scripture says. As believers, we are spiritual Israel. Israel <coughs> means he will rule as God. Hmm. Praise the Lord. That's who you are. Yeah. You are to rule as God in this earth. Yes, we are Abraham's seed. Yes. Amen. And God wants God's likeness, His image, in the earth. And we are born again in the image of God, righteous. Yes. Amen? Look at Acts chapter 3, verses 19 through 21, Peter. Acts 3, 19 through 21. Well, you use a lot of scripture just so you know this isn't just some thing I'm coming up with, but it's, it's Bible. It's what the scripture says. Amen? And that's what we want more than anything else. We don't need opinions. We've been getting a lot of that. And everybody has opinions, praise the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And He shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all His holy prophets since the world began. Now we've talked a lot here about the Bible being so many, it's spiritual, it, there's metaphors, there's types, there's shadows throughout the Bible, and, and you need to look at it that way. You need to read it that way. Amen? So he says repent. Well, what does repent mean? It means to change your mind. doesn't mean to grovel and cry and weep and carry on. You can do that, but that's not true repentance. Repentance is just changing your mind. Now you may be upset and everything and, and, and change your mind, but the, the repentance is just a change of mind. Amen? Amen. It's 
Another way of saying it is to renew your mind. How do you change your mind? You know, you change your mind to what God says. And not what you've believed or thought or said yourself. Amen. So you renew your mind. Every time, this scripture is telling us, every time we renew our mind to God's word and who we are in Christ, there is an appearance of Christ. Amen. We're the body of Christ. So every time we renew our mind to this reality, there is a, a, a sending forth of Jesus. Yes. Amen. But the problem is generally we are God's little G talking like men. Yeah. Double minded. Yeah. And that will get you nothing. Amen. So we, we have to speak words of faith. Because the just shall live by faith. Amen. And faith comes by God's word. Yes. Praise the Lord. All right, let's go to Hebrews 11 now. We'll just you can go to Hebrews 11 1 for right now. I'm not going to really deal with it immediately. But this, all in the book of Hebrews, is about the Hebrews being converted to Christianity or to be leaving in Christ. They could still be Jews, they were just believers. Because Jesus didn't come to start a religion. He came to redeem people back to God. Yes. Amen. So uh, the, the, these Hebrew converts were supposed to, according to Hebrews 11, this is what Paul's teaching them, is to look away from their circumstances and look to the heroes of faith, to their predecessors, to their fathers and grandfathers, you know, Abraham and so on and so forth, all the way back. Because each one of these people, like all of the Old Covenant, is a picture of redemption. It's pointing us to Jesus. It's a, it's a type of something, but it's pointing us to a greater truth. And that truth is Jesus Christ. Amen? So look at Hebrews 11, 1. And it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So we're not looking at a shadow now. We're, we, we're like Tim said, the veil has been rent. We have come into the presence of God. All of those shadows, all those types were pointing us to Jesus. Well, now we have Jesus and we can see that the purpose of those things were to point us to Him. Right. So that we would recognize Him, right? So we aren't looking at a shadow, but we're looking at Jesus, the substance. Right. Yes. He is the substance yes. of our faith. He's what we believe. He's what we believe in. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. The substance of our faith. Yes. Okay? Look at Hebrews 11, 7 now. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not yet or not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of righteousness, which is by faith. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. All right? Genesis chapter 6 and verse 8. Warned of things not seen, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. You know, Noah means rest. That's the, the definition of the word. You can look it up in Strong's Concordance. It's there for anybody that wants to take the time to look it up. Noah is rest. By faith, Noah did something about something he'd never seen. Right? By faith, Noah moved, prepared, <clears throat> preached, or spoke. It's going to rain. And it had never rained on the planet. Right. There had never been a drop of rainfall. The, the, everything was watered from the subterranean waters and from the dew. But there had never been rainfall. Right. But Noah believed God. Right. Amen. Genesis chapter 6, look at verse 14. God says, make an ark of gopher wood. Room shalt thou make in the ark and shall pitch it within and without with pitch. Uh, go to verses 18 through 20 now.
But with thee will I establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons and thy wife and thy sons' wives with thee. And of every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort shalt thou bring into the ark to keep them alive with thee. They shall be male and female. Of fowls after their kind, and cattle after their kind, and every creeping thing of the earth after his kind, two of every sort shall come unto thee to keep them alive. Praise the Lord. So what God tells uh, Noah is build a redemptive vehicle that will carry you into a new world. A world without a curse. The curse is coming. Amen. All right. Genesis chapter 7 and verse 2. Of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by sevens, the male and his female. And of beasts that are not clean by two, the male and his female. That's how all of us come to Jesus. Clean and unclean. You get into the ark, whether you're clean or you're unclean, if you believe, if you go to Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's good news in case, you know, there's anybody here that isn't perfectly clean. Right. And I'm looking at some dirty people. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and one right here. But he says to pitch it within and pitch it without, right? Pitch is the word kafar, K-A-F-A-R. It means atonement. Amen. It's the atoning blood of Jesus that we are sealed with, the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Amen. Genesis chapter 8, verse 4. Now stay with me. I'm, you know, it's kind of slow getting going here, but Genesis 8 and 4. And the ark rested in the seventh month, on the seventeenth day of the month, upon the mount of Ararat. All right? The seventh month... And the 17th day. Guess what that is? The Feast of Tabernacles. Praise the Lord. Seventh month, 17th day is the Feast of Tab Tabernacles. In the book of Nehemiah, this was a time when God was uh, bringing restoration to Jerusalem, to the temple, and to the entire land of Israel. Let's, I, let me just let you look at this. Nehemiah chapter 8 and verses 14 through 16. I'm t I'm, what I'm doing is showing you that God had one message from Genesis all the way through. It hasn't changed. He, he, hasn't, he hasn't adapted it for the 21st century, for our culture, for our generation. It's the way it has always been. Praise the Lord. So they found written in the law, which the Lord had commanded by Moses, that the children of Israel should dwell in booths in the feast of the seventh month. This is the... The, the, the Feast of Tabernacles. That they should publish and proclaim in all their cities and in Jerusalem, saying, Go forth unto this mount, fetch olive branches and pine branches and myrtle branches and palm branches and branches of thick trees to make booths as it is written. So they were these olive branches and everything to make a booth. So the people went forth and brought them and made themselves booths, everyone upon the roof of his house and in their courts and in the courts of the house of God and in the street of the water gate and in the street of the gate of Ephraim. Praise the Lord. So the Feast of Tabernacles represents an open heaven. Yes. Praise the Lord. So they're built, they're putting booths up on the roof of their houses, praise God, so that they can have this experience, amen, with God. It represents open heaven. The, the rooftop, amen, experience, the fullness, amen, of God dwelling in us. You remember the upper room was Pentecost? Uh -huh. Then you move past Pentecost to this fullness of the relationship with God, which is the Feast of Tabernacles. So Noah was left on the earth with the same commission as Adam was. Take dominion, subdue the earth. Right. Praise the Lord. Genesis 8 and 4 again. Praise the Lord. We'll get to us in a moment. Hallelujah. So uh, he says in the ark, so it lands on the seventh month, the seventeenth day, The ark rested in the seventh month on the seventeenth day of the month upon the mount of Ararat. All right? Ararat. What's that? Arar, A-R-A-R, -A -R, means bitter curse. <laughs> At means to undo. So the ark landed when, it, when the floods subsided and the, lark came, and the ark came to rest. It landed at a place where the curse was reversed. 
a new world. A new place without a curse. Amen? <clears throat> Praise God. And here's what I think. I think if Noah hadn't believed God, it would have never rained. We'd still be dealing with the curse. Somebody had to believe God. God had to have somebody on this planet that would believe what He said and then act on that belief. And speak it. He spoke it for 120 years while He was building that ark. Something that had never been seen before. But he believed God. Amen? That's the power that we have as believers. Praise God. Hebrews 11 now, verse 7. <coughs> By faith, Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. 2 Peter 2 and 5. Spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of, of the ungodly. Now, what, what was the righteousness he preached? He just preached what God said. He just said what God said. Amen? Now, remember, it had never rained. But Noah preached it was going to rain. Because God said it was going to rain. And what kept the people out of the ark was not sin, as we would define it. It was unbelief. Yes. That is sin. Yes. Praise the Lord. What kept everybody else out was they didn't believe what Noah was preaching. They didn't believe the Word of God. Amen. It isn't what we call sin that stops you from receiving the promises of God. It's unbelief. That's right. yeah. Praise the Lord. See, we have grace so that even if I don't believe God, now I've got to believe God to be saved. But I don't have to believe God that I'm going to be healed. I can go ahead and be sick and die. I don't have to believe God that He wants to prosper me. I can be broke the rest of my life. Right? What I have to do... Now that's sin because I'm not believing what God says. But because of grace, I'm not going to be punished for that. I just won't get the benefit of it. So again, it's consequences of what we believe and how we act on what we believe. Praise the Lord. Well, right now, we've got an ark. An ark that we can get into, which is Christ. And not only does He save us, but He brings us into a new world without a curse. Amen. A world that is abundant in life. Praise the Lord. A world where we can rule and reign, amen, above the issues of this world. Praise the Lord. That's the difference between Noah and the rest of the earth's population in his day. He believed, he spoke, and he acted on God's word. And he got a whole new world without a curse. Praise the Lord. Noah found grace in the eyes of God, not because he was better, but because he was just and justified, and he walked with God. Now you can argue that Noah was the only one with pure blood because of the fallen angels intermarrying and mingling and so on and so forth. That may be true, but the point is, he, the, re the reason he was saved was because he believed God. And here, think about this. We have the blood of Christ. We have God's life flowing in us. We've been separated, amen, from the fallen. From the kingdom of darkness. Praise God. Grace is favor that you don't deserve. It's not something you work for. It's not something you earn. When Adam sinned, everybody sinned. Praise the Lord. Adam carried the seed of every one of us in this room throughout the world. I mean, I did a little geneal uh, genealogical search here a few years back uh, before my mother passed away. And we got all the way back to like the 16th century... And let me tell you, we got Italian, we got uh, German, we got French, we got uh, Scandinavian, we got uh, Middle Eastern. I mean, every race you can imagine is in my genealogy. If, I know that because if I could have gone back further, I'd have ended up with Adam and Eve. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. And think about it. After the flood, it all started again with Noah. His three sons, their wives. So we all come from the same place. I mean, we make all these big deals about everything. But the truth is, we are all out of Adam. And in Adam, every one of us sinned. 
Yes. Amen. Because the seed that was in Adam, the seed of all of us, and the scripture says the seed produces after its own kind. Yes. Whatever Adam produced is what we became. Yes. Praise the Lord. Remember Ishmael. He was corrupt seed because he wasn't promised from God. It was just something that man did on his own. But Isaac was the promised seed. Because in him, all of us would be blessed. Yeah. Praise the Lord. We are the seed of Abraham. The scripture tells us. We are righteous. He was righteous. So we are righteous. He was righteous because he believed God. We are righteous because we believe God. That makes us the seed of Abraham. We believe God. Amen. That makes us spiritual Israel. Or God in charge in the earth. See, the devil wanted to get to that seed. He had to do it. And so through Adam's sin of unbelief, Satan contaminated all of us. The entire population of the world. Look at Romans 5.17. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, Adam... Much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Yes. So when Adam sinned, he became born again. But he was born from life, the life of God, to death. That's why God said you'll surely die, but he didn't die right away. He died as far as God and his relationship was with God. He was born again. He was born from life to death. Yes. Amen. Yes. So now he took the nature of Satan. Who became the God, little g, of this world. Because Adam gave him his authority. Alright. Romans uh, 5.17 says, For by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Much more. Right. Reign in life by one Jesus. Not just grace, but abundance of grace. Right. Wherever sin is, there is an abundance of grace yes. for the believer. Praise the Lord. So I want, to, I want you to just think a minute. Where do you get your values? Where do you get your images, your thoughts? From the Word of God or from a cursed world? Yeah. Well, my finances are all going to hell. Who are you listening to? Yeah. Amen. Amen. My body's falling apart. Who are you listening to? Exactly. Future's not looking good. Who, who are you listening to? Exactly. For by one man's offense death reigned by one, which much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Righteousness is of God. It's a God attribute yes, yes. that's given to us. Yes. When I say we, I'm not saying this because of me, because I know there were others doing this, but I'm just saying... I'm believing. I, I, Sally's telling me. And she look, she's just telling me what the weather report is. Yes. And she'll tell you, I got irritable. Yes. I mean, I wasn't blessing her out or anything. I just said, I know, I know, I know, I don't care. I don't care. And she's thinking, what is wrong with this idiot? He doesn't care. There's people drowning and, you know, the house can be underwater. No, I don't want to hear what the world is saying tonight because I'm confessing something else. I'm trying to stay focused on the fact that me and my house, amen, are not going to be underwater. And the church is not, I'm not going to have to go down there and do what we did 10 years ago and rip the place apart and give me all that stuff and go through the whole mess again. Amen. 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 <laughs> I'm, I want to believe. And I'm thinking in my natural mind everything everybody else is thinking, but I've got to say what God is saying. I gotta, I'm not saying nothing but what God said or I'm going to end up getting what everybody else is getting. Why? Because I've been given authority. Yes. If I don't want to exercise my authority, then I just got to t accept whatever the cursed world is getting. But I'm not living in a cursed world. I'm in the kingdom of God. I've been delivered out of that darkness and into light. Amen. I've been delivered from that old world. And I've been put in a new world where there is no curse. And I'm told to go out to multiply, amen, to bless it and to encourage, amen, and to believe for all that God has promised. Yes. Praise God. 
Amen. That's what Christianity is, church. It ain't about keeping a bunch of rules. It's about keeping your mouth, amen, in agreement with what God says so you can get what God wants to give you. Because you're either going to get one or the other. You're going to get what the world is prophesying or you're going to get what God has prophesied. And you are the one with the authority to determine that. That's why I said, I don't believe... If Noah had not believed God, I don't believe it ever would have rained. He had to have somebody in the earth that believed so that he could produce. He said, my word will not come back to me void. If I can find somebody on this earth that will agree with what I've said, amen, it'll produce whatever I said it would produce. Praise God. So, believe or don't believe. If you don't believe, that's sin. Well, we've got grace to cover us, but we don't get anything if we don't believe. So God says what? Awake to righteousness and sin not. Now, we've, been, we've interpreted that as, you know, straighten up and act righteous, amen, and quit your sinning. Now, that isn't what He said. What He said was realize you are the righteousness of God and you won't be in unbelief. Believe what I've said and you won't be in sin. Praise God. Righteousness is not the good or the religious way that we act. Righteousness is the life and the nature of God coming into our lives. No sense of guilt. No shame. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. No consciousness of sin. No shame. No sense of lack. No sense of guilt. I mean, can you imagine how free we would be if we could get to that place? And that's where God wants us. That's what He redeemed us to. Yes. Conscious of our righteousness in Christ. Not consciousness of sin. We are really new creatures. Mm-hmm. Awake to righteousness. Mm. And believe God. Yes. We've been born again in the image of God. After His likeness. Okay? So we are like God, are we not? We already know seed produces after its own kind. That's how we became sinners. We were in Adam, all of us, and so everything come out of Adam was a sinner. Right? We had to be redeemed. We had to be brought back to God. Amen? How did God do it? How does God do everything? He created everything with words. With spoken words. Hebrews 11.3, Peter. Praise God. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. In other words, words are invisible. But they have power. Amen? Amen. They have you. We know they do because you can get, you can get yourself into a big mess just talking. Oh, that's right. Amen. How many how many times you know we've got messed up by yes. words? Praise the Lord. Through faith we understand the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made by things which do appear. Yeah. Genesis one is simply a copy of the words that God used to release His faith. Praise the Lord. You say, well, God has faith? Of course He does. He's a God of faith. Yes, he is. Everything He does, He does by faith. Right. Praise the Lord. John 1, 1 through 5, Peter. John 1, 1 through 5. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Now we already talked about the seed, amen, the Genesis law, that everything produces after its own kind. Amen? Genesis 1, verses 11 and 12, Peter. God said, let the earth bring forth grass, herb yielding seed, the fruit tree yielding fruit after its kind, 
whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. The earth brought forth grass, herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, those seed, whose seed was in itself after his kind, and God saw that it was good. Okay, now look at Genesis 1, 26 through 28. So he's given us the, the template here for how he operates, right? How things work. And God said then, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Okay, so this is a powerful truth because, number one, he says, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Amen. So God created man then, he says, in his own image. And then three, he says, once I've created you in my image after my likeness, now replenish the earth, subdue it, and have dominion. In other words, be God on earth right. as I am in heaven. Right. John 4, 24. We have not because we ask not, or we ask amiss. If we were saying what God said, we'd have more of what God promised. Yes. Amen. Yes. So God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So we are in the image of God. We understand that we were created in God's image, so we are capable of operating in the same kind of faith. We are spirits with a soul living in a body. But we are, essentially, we are spirits. We just happen to have a body for a vehicle down here. And you have to have a body on earth to be legal on the earth. And so God put his spirit in our body. So that God has access to the earth legally. That's why we have free will. We have to agree. Amen. So, Genesis 2 and 7. And God takes man... Forms him out of the dust of the earth, and he breathes into his mouth the breath of life, or into his nostrils the breath of life. That word is ruach, which means spirit. So God, the spirit life, the very life of God, was breathed into Adam. Yes. Praise the Lord. Before Adam screwed it all up, right? Mm -hmm. That is seed. The seed of God was breathed into Adam. Praise God. All right, Mark 9, 23. We were born again, born of the Spirit. We have the seed of God in us. We were born after His likeness, in His image. All right, and Jesus said unto them, If you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. Yes. Yeah. See, if you don't believe, you're in sin and you're not getting nothing but a mess. Mm -hmm. But if you believe, everything's possible. Yeah. Amen? Yes. Ephesians 5 and 1. If you believe you're the righteousness of God, if you believe you have the seed of God in you, yes. you are God's image in this earth. Not a religious dope. You know, not somebody going around finding fault with everybody. No. Jesus had, the biggest problem Jesus had was with religious people. It wasn't with the people that were just out there trying to find their way. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Be, so he says, to be in the image of God, you've got to talk like your God. Sure. Yes. Amen? You've got to act like God. And I'm not talking about religious acting. I'm talking about acting on faith. He, if he says, whatever you set your hand to prospers, believe whatever you're setting your hand to, it's going to prosper. Yes. And confess that. Yes. Not that, well, it didn't work last time. Praise the Lord. Yes. Jesus was imitating the Father. Yes, he did. Amen. He said, I only say what I hear my Father say. I only do what I see my Father do. Uh -huh. Psalms 89, 34. And God says in Psalms 89, 34, basically that whatever I said, it is. Mm -hmm. And it won't be changed. Mm -hmm. I don't say it one thing to one person and then decide to say something else to somebody else. Mm -hmm. My covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that has gone out of my lips. Yes. What's it said? Yes. It is the law. Yes. It is forever. Yes. 
settled. This word says we are to prosper yes. and be in health even as our soul prospers. Yes. We are to be blessed coming in, as I've said already, and going out. We are to be the head and not the tail. Amen. we got to speak it. Yes. we got to believe it. we got to confess it. Yes. That's, how we, that's how we dominate. That's how we reign on earth. Amen. The Word says in John 5, 4, Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. Yep. The Scripture doesn't say you're an overcomer if you feel like an overcomer. Because most of the time you won't feel like an overcomer because you're being overcome. Yeah. The world's happening. Stuff's happening to you. Amen. Yeah. And it isn't fitting with what God's Word said. Right. Never rain. And I'm preaching rain. Right? Mm -hmm. Well, nobody in our family ever been, you know, financially over the top. I don't care. Right. I mean, I care, but I don't care. Right. I mean... Whatever was, was. You, all things have become new. Yes. Right. Amen? You, you have a chance to change the whole, you know, the whole world. Yes. Amen? Yes. You, can, you can change your destiny and the destiny of every yes. bit of your progeny. All of your, the seed that follows after you. Yes. Because the seed will produce Woo. after its own kind. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. All right, Luke 17, 5, 6. This is the good news that God came to give us. We are overcomers in Christ. Nothing, amen, can overcome you. Praise the Lord. The apostle said unto the Lord, increase our faith. And the Lord said, if you had faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you'd say to the sycamine tree, be thou plucked up by the root, be thou planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Praise God. So Jesus gives us two great truths. In verse 6 alone, he says, faith is a seed. Yeah. And the way you plant a seed is you say it. Mm. Amen. Yes. And that seed will produce after its own kind. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. This is exactly what Tim was talking about earlier when he said, if you've got a little child, a little kid, and you tell them what a worthless little jerk, you know, you're never going to amount to nothing, you're a punk, you know, you're just trouble, that's all you'll ever be. Don't be surprised when that kid's 40 years old still living in your house. <laughs> amen? And got problems and stuff. Why? Because he believed, amen, the seed that had been spoken to, into him. That's why you want to be positive with kids, with other people and everything else, because that seed will reproduce after its kind. Yes. Praise the Lord. That's the authority that we have. Yes. Praise God. Yes. You are of God, little children, he says. So speak like it. Act like it. Talk like it. You ever seen, they used to have these, I don't know if they do anymore, they used to have to take a kid to, to, to work deal, you know, you could bring your kid to work. Well, I don't know, but I, I've, I have kids and grandkids that got great grandkids now, and uh, I'll tell you, they want to be whatever you are. They want to do whatever it is you're doing. They can tear some stuff up, man. I mean, if, you, if you're trying to build a dog house, they're liable to tear the house down, yeah. give them a hammer or something. But I'm saying, they just want to do what dads do. And they want to do what grandpas do. They want to, re they want to act like them. They, they want the same overhauls, you know. They want the same shirt. They want the same shoes. They want to look like dad. They want to, they want to be like dad, right? That's what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be imitators of God. Yes. Praise the Lord. John 12, verse 47 through 50. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not, for I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me, he gave me a commandment what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that his commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. Praise the Lord. So Jesus says it like this. The Father gave me instructions, what I should say. And those words spoken would produce life. And whatever I speak is exactly what the Father said. Right here. So how did Jesus overcome the world, the flesh, and the devil? Now, you don't have to go there, Peter, for the sake of time, but he, he prayed. 
But he didn't pray the problem. No. He prayed the answer. Yes. What God said is the answer. Yes. Amen. He spoke accurately. Not corrupt seed, but righteous seed. Praise the Lord. His conversation was always based on what God said. When we get results in prayer, whether it's praying for a family member, for a loved one, for a health issue, for a financial issue, don't go begging God. He's already dealt with it. He wants you to pray the good seed, the, the, the righteous seed, the truth, what God said. That's why we've seen results. Because we're just saying what God said about it. Number three, he always spoke the end results, not the problem. He never confessed present circumstances. He spoke the desired result. Think about it, Abraham. Right? Why was he righteous? Because he said what God said, even though there, there wasn't any evidence that this could ever happen. Right? It hadn't happened. And now he's an old, old man. His wife's an old, old woman. But yet, I'm going to get a kid. Yes. He didn't say, oh, God, how are you going to do it? He just said what God said. What did Noah do? Never seen it rain. Had, had never rained before. But what did he do? He didn't say, well, I, I, what's rain? He said, it's going to rain in a bunch. Hallelujah. Amen. Righteous seed. He was planting the seed, amen, of God. Yes. Praise the Lord. Jesus used the written word to defeat Satan. Now, I won't go there again. This is Mark, in Mark chapter 4. You can read verses 3 through 11. You know the stories before he's baptized, or right after he's baptized, he goes out in the desert, and the enemy comes at him. Well, if you're the Son of God, he's doing the same thing to him that he did to Adam. Then do this or do that and do the other thing. Prove to me. Amen. But he just kept the word. He just said what the word said. He didn't say anything else. He didn't add anything to it. He just said what the word said. Jesus always spoke directly to the problem. Trees, storms, waves, demons, diseases, Satan, and every one of them obeyed him. Praise the Lord. And they did not, and listen to what I'm saying, they did not obey him because he was the Son of God, but because he was the Son of Man. Because it was the Son of Man that was given authority. That's why he didn't operate as God in this earth. He operated as a man filled with the Spirit. Exactly what we are today. Praise the Lord. John 5, verses 26 and 27. He had dominion. He had authority on the earth because He was the Son of Man. Praise God. For as the Father hath life in Himself, so hath He given to the Son to have life in Himself. And hath given Him authority, look at this, and hath given Him authority to execute judgment also because He is the Son of Man. And another place where they brought the two guys down through the roof of the house, remember? And, uh, you know, let me just say this, too. Everybody needs two crazy friends that have outrageous faith. Yes. You may not have a lot of friends. Most of us don't. We've we got a lot of acquaintances. But if you can find two friends that will believe God, amen, those are friends to hang with. Those are friends that will stand by you. Those are friends that will just do the radical stuff and believe God in spite of what doctors are telling you, in spite of what lawyers are telling you, in spite of what doctors, you know, bankers and everybody else. Get a couple of crazy guys that really believe the Word of God, a couple of crazy women that have faith, and just lock arms with them and believe God and see what God won't do. Amen? Then nothing is impossible if you can believe God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So... He's given this to the Son of Man, right? He operated as a man on the earth under the authority of His Father's Word. That's exactly what we are, church. This, this is who we are. And we're doing all this other crazy stuff. All this, all the, you know, the gymnastics of religion and going through this and going through and trying to keep this thing and do this thing. And do, it's got nothing to do with it. Right. <laughs> We've just been restored in relationship to our Heavenly Father. Yes. We carry the seed of God in us. Yes. And we act like a bunch of people still in darkness. No. Yes. When we've been delivered from the kingdom of darkness yes. into His dear Son. Yes. Praise the Lord. We've been born again. Children of God. So why? You say, well then, I remember my pastor used to say, you know, some of these people, it had been better off if I'd just held them under when I baptized them. <laughs> They'd have been better off just to go right to heaven. You know what I'm saying? How many of you ever kind of experienced some 
things in life that, you know, geez, I don't know. Might have been better off if I just went right then. But here's the point. Why are we still here on earth? Why are we still here in this body? I'll tell you why. To subdue and take dominion for God. To be God in the earth. To expand the kingdom of God from heaven to earth. That's our purpose. That's the only reason we're here. Yeah. To multiply the kingdom. To advance the kingdom. Praise the Lord. Only people born on the earth have authority. And that's why God works through people. New creatures in a new creation in the kingdom of God. A world without a curse. The world out there is still under a curse. We're in the world, we're not of the world. We're of a world the curse has been dealt with. Praise the Lord. All right. Quickly, let me get through the end of this. Genesis chapter 8, verses 10 and 11. I just want to show you the beauty of how God, He doesn't miss a beat. I mean, he, 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 yeah. he's, there's never a scripture there that isn't there for a reason. Wow. Yeah. And He stayed yet another seven days, and again He sent forth the dove. This is Noah now. They sat on Mount Ararat, and the water's receding little by little. So He stayed another seven days there, and again He sent forth the dove out of the ark, and the dove came into him in the evening, and lo, in her mouth was an olive leaf. Now remember that. There was an olive leaf plucked off. He had plucked it off of a branch somewhere. So Noah knew that the waters were abated from off of the earth. Otherwise, there wouldn't have been an olive branch, right? All right. Drop to verse 22, Peter. While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, Day and night shall not cease. Seed time and harvest is not going to change. What God said in Genesis still exists today. What seed you plant, it's going to produce after its own kind. Alright? So this thing with the olive branch, though, is a metaphor. It's about the curse being reversed. Right? Because God is tabernacling with man. He's in us. Amen? So look at Hosea chapter 14, verses 4 through 6. Hosea 14, 4 through 6. I will heal their backsliding. I will love them freely, for mine anger is turned away from him. I will be as the dew unto Israel. He shall grow as the lily and cast forth his roots as Lebanon. His branches shall spread and his beauty shall be as the olive tree and his smell as Lebanon. Matthew 3, 16. Speaking of Jesus here. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened, and unto him he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove lighting on him. The olive branch. Yeah. Prince of Peace. Our kingdom is in him. Uh -huh. Amen. Do you see what I'm saying? The dove lands on Jesus, he's our rest. Amen. He's our peace. He's the olive branch. The curse is reversed. Yes. A new creation. A new world. A world without a curse. Yes. Actually, you know, a, a more profound, biblically rooted understanding is that the end of the world is the end of your world. The conclusion of your identity in Adam. Yeah. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You were His seed. No longer. You died. Amen? And you were raised again. Incorruptible seed. The Word of God. Born of God. Praise the Lord. The remedy for that old creation is an ark. Christ. And if you get into Him, there's no more curse. But there's rest and a new creation, uh -huh. a new world, yes. a life in Christ. Isaiah 53, a couple of scriptures here and we're done. Isaiah 53, verses 4 through 8. Isaiah 53, 4 through 8. So I said the real 
theological probably understanding is that the end of your world is the end of your world as in Adam's seed. Yeah. Praise the Lord. So here he says, Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, talking about Jesus, our, our, our peace, our rest, our, our new world, our curse reversed. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed. He was afflicted. Yet he did not open his mouth. He, brought, he was brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before his shears is dumb. So he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. That's my judgment. Yes. That's my judgment. Praise the Lord. I'm not looking for a white throne judgment. I'm not looking for an end days judgment. He's, Jesus has already judged me. Yes. In him. And declared me righteous. Praise the Lord. That's good news. We're not struggling to get good. We're not, we're not battling with, you know, the old man. Praise God. Right? He's dead. And we have a new seed in us, and it's the seed of God. Praise the Lord. Isaiah 54, verse 9. For this is as the waters of Noah unto me. For as I have sworn that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth, so have I sworn that I would not be wroth with thee, nor rebuke thee. That's my new life in Christ. And if you go to the end of Isaiah 54, he says, No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises in judgment against you, you will condemn. This is the heritage of the children of God. And their righteousness is of God me. Yes. That's who we are. That's our identity. Amen? Yeah. My new life in Christ. Yeah. New world yes. where I rule and reign Amen. by the grace of God. Amen. Where my words have power. Yes. Amen? You know the words of a king must be obeyed. Right. Praise God. Say what God says. Do what God does. And the word becomes a reality. Yes. And you'll start to see that you're living in a new world. Yes. A world that is dominated by the word of God and your faith in that word. To the extent that you believe it and speak it, that becomes your reality. Heaven on earth. Yes. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Yes. Amen. Amen. Give us this day our daily bread. Yes. The bread of life. Yes. And it will be enough yes. to get you through every obstacle, Amen. every attack of the enemy, every person out there that's still in the cursed world. Yeah. You have protection, yes. provision. And in fact, you may be their ark. Yes. Their means of escaping the curse uh -huh. and coming to a new world of peace, joy, power. In the Holy Ghost. Can you say praise the Lord? Amen. Give him a hand clap this morning. Praise God. Thank the Lord. Amen. Amen. If you can believe, all things are possible. Amen. Put your put your heart, your mind, your soul, your spirit to believe in this. Yes. And watch your tongue. Yes. Say what he says. Yeah. Or don't say anything. Amen. You know, sometimes you get overwhelmed by the circumstance. I do. Everybody does. Oh, yeah. That doesn't make you evil. Doesn't make you unsaved. It just means you got to learn to stop speaking until you come to an agreement with this, and then say what this says. I'm quiet a lot. My wife will tell you I don't talk a lot at home because I'm thinking a lot of stuff I shouldn't be saying. Praise the Lord. So, Amen. I know if I open my mouth, things will only get worse. Praise God. So I'm I'm I, I just don't say anything until I can say what God's word is saying. And I'm not trying to be religious even about this. I'm just saying this is the way you've got to do it. And you have that's the discipline. That's the discipling. It isn't, you know, you know, just you know what 
how long your skirt is or how high your neck collar is or whether you got facial hair or don't have facial hair or whether you know you mix swimming and all, you know, all the other stuff that we all some, a lot of us went through you know in Pentecostal circles and so forth I'm not putting anybody down I'm just saying there's just so much more to this than we've made it we've made it about rules and regulations Jesus met all the demands of that yes. so that we could have liberty so that we could have an abundant life so we could live like he lived in this earth with an abundance, with more than enough for every area of life. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Go in the power of His might. Amen. Keep saying what He says and you'll get what He gave you. Praise God. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.